Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. Today we have a very exciting video because in front of me I have the UNSC Razorback Blitz. And this is essentially the new Troop Hog. So I'm very interested to, first of all, just see this thing next to the Warthog. And I'm very, very interested to see how many Marines can comfortably fit in the back of this. But we got to get it open and built first. So let's take a look at the box. Uh, it looks very similar to the Warthog Rally box. Um, it's the same size. It's the new box design, though, that hinges open. So that's a little different. But overall, it looks fairly similar to the uh, Hog Rally. We got our two enemies up here, Razorback itself, Kelly, Manning, the area that would have a turret if this was a Warthog, but currently she is the turret. Top shows the figures again, side shows the Razorback, and then the alternate build, which we can see better on the back here, and that alternate build looks very interesting. It's like a little defense wall, and then... I don't know if that's a missile launcher or some sort of communications tower, but it looks pretty good. I'm definitely interested to see how that works. The brute mech looks a little weird, but I guess we'll have to see in person. Um, that's about it for the box. I mean, it's it's your standard box for the most part. So let me go ahead, grab my knife, and we'll cut this open. I definitely like the way that they have changed these boxes. I mean, look at that. Look how nice and clean that is. So let's see. We have... Oh, this is bag number three. Bag number four. Bag number one. Looks like bag number one is all the figures. Bag number two. So it looks like we got four bags and then the bag with the wheels. And then, of course, the instructions done up in that kind of simple infinite style like we've seen with all the sets. And yeah, pretty standard overall for the box and instructions. But I mean, we don't really need something new and uh, amazing every time with the box and instructions. So. Uh, let me go ahead and get this built, and then we will take a closer look. So here's the set mostly put together. I got the razor back together. Uh, we have a big pile of extras, some pretty useful pieces. I don't know how many will be used for the alt. Um, and then we have the temporary pieces, which I still don't understand why Mega does this, because half the time, or no, more than half the time, the temporary pieces are pretty much unnecessary but these are stands for all the figures as well so that's cool they come in green um we do get a brick separator so that's all that out of the way um and we are going to talk about the figures first because the figures are an absolute disaster so first up we have this marine and this marine would be pretty cool if he would fit together but i'll get to that in a second uh, he would have, you know, the normal helmet. His head is one we've seen before. He's got ODST shoulder armor and then the regular uh, Marine getup. Um, but there's a whole bunch of problems. First of all, his head literally does not go on his neck. I don't know what's wrong, but like if I squeeze it, I can get in there. And I just spent like 15 minutes sanding the neck uh, peg and I still cannot get it to fit properly so he can't even have a head which is great um and then his foot here just spins loosely which i could fix that like if that were the only issue that would be fine you know i could just pull that out put some super glue on the peg let it dry put it back in it'd be fine but no the head problem is the biggest thing i literally the head doesn't go on and then on top of that something is wrong with the waist so like it feels fine at first, but when you put it together, it doesn't snap. And as I was moving it, it just kind of popped off and it's sticking for now. But yeah, it. I was just holding him and like sanding him and his torso just fell in half. 
So, yeah, um, he's a disaster. I, I don't like to say this, but it feels a little bit like Mega's quality control has been slipping a tiny bit lately. Things that you really shouldn't have QC issues are having QC issues, and we get things like this. So I really hope that this is not a widespread problem. Um, because we've still got some more figures to talk about. So this guy would be a fine addition to the set, except for he's literally just a pile of mess. Oh, yeah, and he comes equipped with a old-style BR, which is very nice in a gray. This is the best part about this figure, uh, since this figure has so many quality control issues. Next up is Kelly, and Kelly is almost fine. Uh, she has this white that's kind of translucent-ish. It's not like straight white like I thought it was. Um, so it's... I would have preferred a straight white, honestly, but it's not bad. It, it's a fine color. Uh, she's got the stripes on the arms and the stripes on the legs. Uh, the new chest plate and back piece. The new Hermes helmet. And why does she get to use these shoulders and Chief doesn't? That's just not fair. She comes armed with a tactical shotgun. Uh, she has no numbers on her chest, unfortunately, which that's kind of a big bummer in my opinion. But looks like Linda from the New Hero series won't have her number either. I think Kevin MCX was saying that they just were limited by the resources they were given. So I guess they were given concept art that didn't have it, maybe. Um, so here's where it gets kind of down. I can't move Kelly's head. Like, if I force it, I can, but the neck joint starts twisting. And again, this is after a good while of sanding. Um, and there is some marring on the visor right there. You can see, like, it got touched by something, I guess, when it was still wet. Overall, the visor print is nice. That one spot is just a bit of a bummer. Um, but that, again, that would be, I could overlook that. If the head would move, look at this. I can kind of get it to move, but again, it's twisting the neck as I do it, and if I do it too much, the neck will snap off. So, that means that's two figures I'm going to have to send back to customer service, unfortunately. Um, but real quick, I will grab Chief and... Come on, Fred, get over here. Just so we can get a side-by-side, because... -side, like I said, I'm going to have to send Kelly back, which means I won't have her for any comparisons for a while. So there is the new Fred from the Chopper, and then this is the Chief from the uh, Wasp. So I think they look pretty nice uh, side by side. I, I do think Chief needs some updates. Like, we need this shoulder piece for him we need this back piece made for the the male torso and then we really could use a new helmet because this one's a bit small but i guess the back plate matches with fred uh but yeah they look good side by side and i'm very interested to see how the whole lineup looks when linda comes out but that's just really disappointing that i am gonna have to send two figures back so far but we are not done yet because we have the Brute Warrior who just uh, looks wise is pretty darn epic because he's got the purple color scheme. They brought in the Destiny shoulders to use for him, which I've heard some people point out that they should have used these for Eshiram, and I agree it would have matched better. So here's to hoping that we'll get a hero's version of Eshiram with proper uh, shoulders. But he's got this uh, kind of silver print that is a bit hazy in places. But I think that's on purpose to look like battle damage, which is pretty cool. He's got purple on his lower arm. And he has these feet. Now, before... Hold on, let me grab my other guys. So here's one of the Brute Warriors from before. And he has what looks to be the same feet, except this guy... Whoa, wait, hold on. Hold on a second. Because this guy, the one, the silver dude, should not be able to stand on studs. 
Yeah, like that. See, it's his foot is too long. But I was told that this one can. Yes. So they took the same mold and they just changed it in the perfect amount to allow the feet to stick, which is great. That's amazing. That 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 was a perfect choice. That was a perfect choice. Um and so I would really like this figure overall. There he is side by side. See the coloring. And then I brought in the Halo Heroes um, brute as well. They they complement each other very nicely, I think, with those uh, colors. Um. Oh, and he comes armed with this plasma... Was that a plasma launcher? Um, but I'm going to have to send this guy back too because look at this. That is not supposed to happen at all. And that's, it pushed all the way in. So, and so it just hangs out like that. And the waist did the same thing as the Marine. It didn't actually like snap into place. I haven't had this guy fall apart on me, aside from the arm. But I don't, it might, I really don't know. And I'm not going to have him hanging around long enough to find out. Uh, yeah, he's going back to customer service. Very disappointing. Last, but certainly not least, we have Victor the Grunt. Or, I don't know, is this guy Victor? Because he's not quite the same as the blind bag Victor. And I'll show you that in a moment. But, he's got more pale skin. He's got more print. Got some print on the side of the head. Print on the face. Print on the chest piece. Print on the sides of the weapon rack. He's all decked out. Um, as is typical with the grunts, his head was a little bit sticky on the joint. Nothing out of the ordinary, though. Uh, what is kind of out of the ordinary is he also has the rubbery arms, like we saw in the Wasp. And honestly, I really don't like that. I, I don't understand why Mega is going with these arms being rubbery, but the hard ones worked fine. They I've never had them break. Uh, and... Like, when I'm moving this guy, sometimes the arm just flexes and doesn't move the way I want it to. That's just kind of frustrating. Comes armed with a red plasma pistol. There's his little grunty face under there. And he comes with a full complement of weapons. Two shock rifles with the new extra clip on top in red. And this red is very, very bright. Like, uh, I think a couple of people have called it, like, water gun colors. And I would agree with that. It's kind of too bright. So I might end up doing like a wash and a matte top coat for these to make them look better. Maybe paint some silver. And then there's a spike grenade, which I clipped on here. And I'm kind of regretting it. <sighs> these are not great pieces. They're really squishy and fragile. Um, they look decent, but they end up all bent. So I'm not a huge fan of them. But so far, it looks like our Victor here is the best figure of the whole set so far, just purely because of how many terrible quality control mistakes have been made. But uh, where did he go? Ah, here he is. Let me bring in the blind bag Victor, Victor 1.0. Uh, they're very different. They're, they're very different. First of all, the skin... You see, also, let me show you. This is a hard grunt arm. And then this is the soft one. So that's a little bit weird. Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of thinking that this guy is not Victor. This guy is a close relative. Uh, uh, maybe his name is Boris. We have Victor and Boris. Because this, look, Victor has a very, very distinct face. He's got kind of the feathering up here and then the red marking and then the kind of triangle shapes down here. And then Boris over here has gray on the sides. He's got a little red thing on his nose, a different scratched up looking print here, and then a solid red chest plate as well as the print on the side. So definitely not just another Victor. And I think it's fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how the uh, other mule in uh, the garrison pack stacks up to these guys. 
and we'll also have to find a new name for that guy when he comes as well. So now we are on to the Razorback itself, and luckily there really wasn't any major quality control issues with this. Uh, some of the pieces do feel a little less solid than usual, and this bar right here, the way it clips in, kind of pulls back on it, so the whole bed kind of wants to go like this. Um, I think that was kind of some poor engineering on, whoa, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, that's a little bit of poor engineering on Mega's part. I think they should have made this ever so slightly longer, but it's not terrible. Um, you can see right there in the tires, some parts are not sticking together fully. That's what I was trying to fix. So, yeah, it, it, I, I really don't like saying this, but it feels like quality control has backslid a little lately, and that's not a good sign. Mega, what's going on? Overall, though, the look of this vehicle is very cool. It's a very beefy uh, vehicle. It's got an intimidating front, and it's very recognizable as well. I like the dark kind of silvery gray. And then inside, actually, you know what? I need to get closer, but real quick. We got some prints that say UNSC, UNSC, and then back here we got a little bit of red here and here, and then on the front we got some printed lights, as well as a little thing that say no step, no step, which, why would they have that on the hood? Like, you think it would be obvious there is no step here on the front. But then we got some more up here, and then a big kind of floodlight up top. So, right away... The look of it is very, very good, but let's get in close to the kind of driver area. So it's pretty much uh, identical to the build of the Warthog cabin area. Got the steering wheel, the seats. There is a printed console there. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with the shadows. There we go. You can see it a little bit through there. It's identical to the Warthog one, just in red. And then we have a lever here as same as with the warthog but this lever is bright red and bright red that makes it look like some sort of ejector seat or i don't know something like important so that's a little weird i'm not sure what the choice was like why they chose to do red there but it's not terrible and then around the other side we just have a seat with a little bar for you to hang on to so Mega did something a little bit different with the suspension this time around. It's the same system, so we get the bouncy back and forth, and the tires can move independently. Um, if you build it, and you can like pop it down into a pose, and it'll stay there, you built it wrong. I think uh, one of the reviews I saw out there, I don't remember which one it was, but they built it so they could like pose it like that and then it wouldn't snap back into position. It, it should bounce. Like you shouldn't be able to make it stay down. But what they did this time around is they did some red to make the suspension pop a little bit more as suspension and just have some more detail, which I think that's pretty cool. Makes the rubber bands kind of actually add to the whole thing. And then on the front, you got like these extra angled bits to help add to this the whole look. I think they did a good job here. I think it works out pretty well. So let's put some figures in there. But since the figures for this set are all kind of a mess, we're going to have to call in some reinforcements. Reinforcements. I think that's a little overkill, but uh, yeah, you get the point. So we have a whole bunch of Marines here. I think this should be pretty much one of every Infinite Marine so far with a few extras. And we are going to load this hog up. So here is the Marine Survivor from the Platoon Pack. And he is going to drive. So we're going to go ahead and stick him in there. Come on, get your hands on the wheel. Perfect. And then he's got a gun. And I'm going to try and see how many Marines we can load up in the back. But it looks like we can also put some weapons 
up on the rail there. So we've got one Marine in the driver's seat. So now we will take, this is the Marine from the Wasp. Uh, I don't know where her weapon ended up, but she is going to sit in the passenger side. So we've got two in there. Not really sure how they look through the window, but it's, it's kind of the same with the Warthog. Um, and then we are, oh, there's her weapon. Then we're going to load up some Marines into the back here. And I don't know, should they be standing or sitting? I feel like I want to try and get some sitting. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, it kind of looks like we're not going to get all that many up top here. Unfortunately, I don't know how many the troop hogs could fit. Maybe somebody who has one of those could tell me in the comments. But it doesn't look like we can fit many up here. So the the Marines can hold on to that little bar there, which is cool. Wait, where is... Ah, here he is. This is my favorite of all of the Infinite Marines. He's the dude from the Recon Getaway. The guy with the darker skin. But I gave him a backpack and then a grenade strap from Call of Duty. So we're going to put him in the back as well. Come on now. So he can kind of sit like so. Um, maybe... Maybe if I fiddled around some more, I could get more Marines to fit. But it seems like the complement of this... The full complement of this vehicle is four figures, maybe five if you had them standing up in the back. So that brings me pretty nicely to my next point, which was the size feels like the Razorback maybe should have been a little bit bigger. So it's essentially the same base as the Warthog, and I think maybe we could have used it bigger. I I'm saying this without having seen it in game a lot, so I could be wrong here, but I feel like making it a stud wider on either side, so like, what? how many studs across is it right now? Two, three, four, six, so it's about eight studs across. Ten studs across, maybe, for the whole vehicle would have made it a little bit better, because as it is, the Warthog still feels bigger, like the way the windshield is. It just feels bigger, and I think the Razorback is supposed to be bigger. But again, I could be wrong. I'm saying all this without having seen it in the game a ton. Uh, I do think they look nice side by side. I think they complement each other well. I just think maybe the Razorback should have been bigger. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Is the Razorback the right size, or could it have been bigger? I, I definitely would have liked to be able to load up more troops because that is a fairly small amount of troops to fit in that vehicle. Well, there you have it. That is the UNSC Razorback Blitz. And I gotta say, this set has been kind of overall a disappointment. The vehicle itself, the Razorback itself, is very cool. Like I said, I do feel like it should have been bigger but I really don't have many actual complaints with the vehicle itself. It does what it's supposed to. It looks pretty cool. I can fit some Marines in there, and they look ready to roll out. The suspension works quite well, just like with the Warthog. So overall, the Razorback itself is pretty good. I mean, like I said, really, the only thing that could have been done better is maybe having it larger. The figures, on the other hand, I have not had such a disaster of quality control. Like, this even makes the 20th anniversary set look like it had perfect quality control. This is just bad. I don't know. Like, I haven't heard much about other people having issues like this. So I am hoping that maybe I just got the absolute worst luck possible. But... I somehow have a feeling that there will be more sets like this out there, 
and that worries me and that also makes me worry about the halo universe line if the quality control is slipping for these sets when sets like the falcon come out that's like a dream set for a lot of people what is the quality control going to be like are we going to get our noble team out and have them be a disaster like these figures so i'm a bit worried about the direction quality control is going this set just kind of put it into perspective how it's slipped a bit lately hopefully mega will be able to replace these figures uh i think the another big problem with the way quality control is slipping is the customer service because people were taking advantage of it and they had to change it customer service is now more difficult to deal with and you have to ship the figures back and it's just kind of overall turned into a nightmare uh boris the grunt here is perfectly fine i think he is a great addition to the banished lineup and now victor has a pal to help carry weapons so i would rate this set very highly if the figures had not been a, a pile of quality control problems as it is i do think it's worth picking up uh Kelly doesn't have the numbers, which is kind of disappointing. But overall, if you can get one without quality control issues, this is a great set. It matches with the Warthog very nicely. Have one or two of these and then an escort of a Warthog or whatever. That's great. But if the quality control issues continue, this is going to be not a fun time for a lot of people. So right now, this is mainly available uh, at the Walmart website and you can find it in stores in some places i think maybe amazon has a listing but it's been weird because amazon has just been weird lately i'll put the link to the walmart website down below that's where i got mine uh retail i think is 30 for this so all told with shipping and everything i paid 37 which is a fair price so overall it is worth buying let's just hope quality control is not as bad for all of them as it was for mine. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.